Howdy, and welcome to this video introduction to some of the features of the new CD Character Plugins version 1.5. Now, most of the changes that were made in this version were improvements to the plugin code. So, a lot of that stuff is under the hood and may not be noticeable. But there were a few noteworthy new features added, and I would like to show those in this video. First, let's take a look at the new CD bind pose tag. Uh, this tag has been totally rewritten, so it's not compatible with the previous version. Uh, the way it works now is instead of storing the positions of all of the objects in the rig, it only stores the position of the objects you drag to the objects list. So typically you would only drag your rig's controllers to the list. So uh, this takes up a lot less memory. Um, not only does it store the position of all of the objects, but it also will store any user data settings for the objects. The tag not only stores the bind pose, but it can store up to a hundred additional poses. Uh, each pose has a restore button to restore the pose and a mirror button to restore a mirrored version of the pose. Now the restore buttons and the mirror buttons will also detect if you're in auto key mode. So you can uh, move the time slider forward and restore a pose and you have a quick way to rough out your animations. There's a new command called CD freeze transformation which replaces the old CD normalize transform command in CD joints and skin. Now with this command you can freeze an entire hierarchy so that all of the objects in the hierarchy are at a scale of 1. Now this is good for when you have to uh, scale a rigged character to make it match the scene. To scale a rigged character we would first select the CD skin tags, unbind the skin, uh, then select the topmost parent of the rig and make sure we have the object tool selected and use the scale tool to scale the character down. Then we'd hold the control key down to open up the options dialog and make sure that include children and enable scaled are the only ones turned on. And click OK. And then select the uh, CD skin tags and rebind the skin. And there we have our scaled rigged character and all of the objects are at a scale of 1. Now uh, the CD freeze transformation also recognizes a CD bind pose tag so that all of the stored poses are also scaled. In the CD Paint Skin Weights tool, there's a new smooth mode which allows you to smoothly blend the weights between the joints. There's also a new option to turn the normalized weight painting on and off, and you can change that on the fly while you're painting. Uh, if you've painted all of your weights and you have uh, changed from non-normalized to normalized and uh, once you're done you want to renormalize all of the weights there's a new command called CD normalize all weights. The CD joint tool now has a couple of options to allow you to size the joints as they're created. You can choose to uh, auto size the joints which will resize the joints according to the length of the next joint that you create. 
or you can choose to manually size the joints as they're created. There's also a new command that will allow you to change the display size of the joint without actually changing the radius of the joint. The CD joint mirror command can now mirror any kind of object, plus it will include all tags and user data. For example, if we have a uh, completely rigged leg here on the left side with uh, user data and Expresso set up, if we select all of the objects that pertain to that left leg set up, and mirror that over to the right. See we have a complete right leg setup and the user data works. The controller twist in CD Spinal is now much more stable. Uh, you also have a choice of three different interpolation types. There's shortest, average, and longest. Uh, with the shortest interpolation type, you can twist the spine about 180 degrees in either direction before it flips. With average interpolation, you can twist the spine 360 degrees before it starts to flip. And with longest interpolation, you can twist the spine infinitely. And you can just keep going until it comes all the way back around. Now let's take a look at a new feature of CD Spline IK. Now, the term Spline IK is sort of loosely used because it's not truly IK. IK implies that the end joint of a chain will try to achieve the position of the target object. And what we call spline IK is really just a chain of joints that are aligned to a spline. And when we move the control objects to change the shape of the spline, uh, the joint chain changes its shape, but the end joint doesn't achieve the uh, target, the end target here. Now what I've uh, created is something I refer to as true spline IK. If I uh, enable that option, now the end joint will try to achieve the position of the end target object. And I could still use the other spline controllers to change the shape of the spline. But the end joint will try to maintain the position of the end target. For every tag that uh, has the built-in squash and stretch, I've added an option to use a curve so that you can control the shape of the uh, squash and stretch. For example, uh, this is the normal squash and stretch. And by turning on the uh, curve, we can alter the shape of that, like so, so that we get more of a bulge in the center when it squashes. Now if we add a setup with a spring constraint and a little espresso to tie it into the uh, curve, we can get some pretty cool uh, dynamic effects here. There's a new command that will automatically set up a CD hand tag. Uh, to do that you would uh, select the arm controller and then scroll down and select 
the uh, CD thumb and CD finger tags that will be included in the CD hand tag and call the CD add hand tag command. You can see it uh, added the tag and the CD thumb and CD finger tags were automatically added to the links and it also automatically set the base pose. There's a new option that allows you to designate a hand as a left hand and when you turn this option on it causes some of the sliders to work in the opposite direction. Now this allows you to copy a pose from one hand to the other simply by plugging the same slider values in as the other hand. There's also an option that allows you to combine the bend and the curl sliders into one slider. If I enable this option then only the bend slider is available and it controls both the bend and the curl. I've also added a command to copy a hand pose from one hand tag to another. And the way to use this is you would uh, select the source object that has a CD hand tag on it and then shift select the destination object which also has a CD hand tag on it and then call the CD copy hand pose command. The CD morph tag has a couple of new options that allow you to quickly position all of the midpoints when creating a spherical morph. So let's uh, turn on use spherical morph, uh, click on edit midpoint, and you see the new options appear here. If we enable use sliders, we can use the sliders to help us quickly uh, position all of the midpoints at once. So let's move about right there. Set midpoint and there's our spherical morph. There are a couple of new constraints that have been added. One of them is the CD spline constraint. Now this constraint uh, functions basically similar to the align to spline tag, but it has a few uh, additional uh, features. Uh, one of the main features of the CD spline constraint is the ability to drag the object along the spline in the viewport. Uh, you can also choose to use the position slider by enabling the force position option. The CD spline constraint can also constrain a hierarchical chain of objects to the spline. If you enable the hierarchical constraint option here and you can use the offset parameter to set the distance between all of the objects in the chain. The other new constraint is the CD nail constraint and what it does is lock an object at its current position and orientation to the surface of another object. There's also an option called position only. If you enable this option then it will not lock the object's orientation to the surface but only the position. This is great for setting up secondary controls for morphs using a CD skin cluster. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video showing some of the new features of the CD Character Plugins version 1.5. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Adios.